All right, in this video, we're going to talk about bearing oil clearances and also how to plastic gauge and check the actual clearance once you assemble the motor. I'll also cover how to select the correct bearing shells for a Honda motorcycle engine. And so far, it's been the same for the CB550 and now the 750 engine that I'm working on. So I think it's pretty standard for Honda on how their selection process goes and we'll walk you through that. Okay, now the specification for this engine is 0.0008 thousandths of an inch to 0.0018 thousandths of an inch when it's you know brand new from the factory. And it has a service limit of 0.0032 thousandths, okay? Um, I actually went through this process twice. First, I selected the bearings. I was at two thousandths oil clearance and then I went to thicker shells and now I'm at a thou and a half clearance and that's kind of where uh, I want this engine to be. Okay, so here's what we're trying to do with measuring the oil clearance. Here's the top crankcase half. Here's the bottom. I'm drawing this sideways so this is kind of screwy. Okay, so there's the bore diameter when these case halves are together, this gap ignore that. Here's your crank pin. I'm going to draw it really small. And then you're going to have bearing shells, right? So here's your bearing shell. Here's your other bearing shell. This is the dimension we're measuring or trying to achieve, this is your oil clearance. Okay, and then obviously this here is the thickness of the bearing. The thicker or thinner bearing will determine this dimension, right? So that's all we're trying to do. Find that question mark. Okay, step one is to locate the stamp marks on the engine case. And what those stamping marks mean is there's either an A, B, or C, and that gives the bore size a certain tolerance range, okay? Now this is stamped at the factory. You know, they'll machine both cases together and whatever tolerance range it fits in, it'll either get an A, B, or C for each journal. And on the casing, there are five stamp marks for each journal. Now, I usually run with these numbers. I don't double check them because if you think about it, the case, um, that doesn't really change over time. It also doesn't wear over time. That doesn't mean that the dimension may not change over time, but honestly, I don't have the tools to measure the bore, so I usually run with the stamping numbers. Okay, this is the top case, and we're looking at the bottom of it. Okay, so the cylinder studs are over here. Under this rib here, in this area, there's stamp alpha character stamped. On mine, it's B, 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 B. There should be five of them. The first alpha character corresponds to this main journal diameter. The second one to this one, third, fourth, and fifth. And the alpha ca characters that can be here can be A, B, C. And they, and they can vary. You know, one can be A, one could be B, it doesn't matter. Okay, there are the characters. You can see them clearly here. This case has been completely vapor blasted, so they show up real nice. If yours is really oily and dirty, you're obviously going to have to clean and search for it a little bit. All right, step two is to uh, identify the diameter of the crank pin. Now, I have two cranks. The crank that came out of here does have stampings or scratch or scribe marks on the crank in the service manual tells you how to uh, decode it. Um, I couldn't really make it out. Also, the crank was junk, meaning it was worn, so that, that dimension no longer holds true. Uh, and then next, I bought a good crank on eBay and it had no markings whatsoever. So I had, to, I had no choice but to measure it with a micrometer. Okay, over here, um, there's some scratch lettering in here, which I can't even make out. But if you look in the service manual, it says that these characters should um, allow you to decode the sizes of the mains and the rod journals. Okay, it'll give you the diameter sizes. So now, what we have to do is measure each main journal here. Okay, and then there's a table in the service manual that... Um, shows you how to select the correct main bearings for the proper oil clearance. 
So right now, let's go ahead and measure all the mains and all the rods, and we will uh, go from there. So what you need is a one to two inch mic, micrometer, and we'll just go ahead and measure this. So we'll just put this over here. Now, if you don't have these tools, just take it to a machine shop. Okay, 1.4175, okay? And I already pre-measured these, and they're pretty much all the same. But you want to measure each one. One point four one seven, and then this guy here is what you want to turn. You want to turn it in till you feel a little bit of drag, and then when th see this this guy has a little clutch on it or a little spring, and that'll give you the correct drag on it. And it's always better just to look at it before you remove it. Okay, that's the same. One point four one seven. One point four one seven. Okay, step three with the case bore sizes determined by the stamping marks, and once you measure the crank pin uh, diameters, next up is you go to the service manual, and there's a little chart, and you can select. It walks you through how to select the bearings, and if we go down here. I wrote this all down. So my crankcase size is B, 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 B. And I got the left and the right. This is the left side of the motor. These are the crank mains. There's five of them. And I measured 1.417 and a half. Okay. So if you multiply that by uh, 25.4, convert it to metric, you get 36 millimeters all the way across. These are 35.99, which is very close. Okay. So then you flip the page. Okay, you flip the page and you come over here and you look at the crankcase and see how they got A's and B's and C's. Well, I'm a B, so I can be any of these three uh, rows. So then I come over here to the crankshaft and I measured 36.000 or 35.99. Uh, so I'm in the A section. So if I go B in this row and A in this row, see these line up? And then I come over here and it tells me I got to order the green bearings. And these are, you know, I checked and all these are available at Partzilla. Uh, I don't know about all of them, but the green were, the yellow were, I believe. So uh, I'm going with the green main bearings. Okay, and then we will check it with plastic gauge. Okay, step four, you make sure the cases are clean, no oil. You install the bearings, you install the crank, put the plastic gauge in, and then you put the halves together and you torque the mains. You don't have to do all the bolts, just the main bolts, not all the six millimeter bolts uh, around the perimeter. By the way, when they say the color, yellow, green, black, brown, whatever, they're gonna have a little ink stamping right here on one side of the bearing, okay? And then to put these in, you see the tang here? You gotta match it up with the notch in the in the case. And that's it. And we're going to install these dry, put pla the crank in, the plastic gauge. We're going to torque the halves together, and we're going to check the clearance. So go ahead and load all 10 shells in. Okay, spin it. So see these oil holes here? Spin it so they're away from uh, this plane here because we're going to lay the plastic gauge right on here and uh, you know we don't want the holes to create any problems okay it's important to install the two dowel pins all right so here's the plastic gauge this is one to three thou of an inch and what it is it looks like a piece of string really and all we're gonna do is cut a little piece and lay it right on the journal okay so I got my little piece here
Okay, it's really, it's kind of tricky to deal with. All right, I got all five pieces of plastic gauge in there. What helps is tweezers, especially for down in here. Um, so those are laid in there. Whatever you do, do not rotate the crank throughout this whole process. We have our two dowel pins, got our shells loaded in. In this case, and just drop it straight down. Okay, now we can take it apart. Step five, you read the plastic gauge to confirm the results. And the thing with the plastic gauge is as the squish gets wider, that means less oil clearance. Basically, you're taking that like Play-Doh and it's squeezing out. Okay, so here's the plastic gauge. You could see in the center there, it didn't get squished at all. And here are these flat patterns are what we're after for bearing clearance. What you do is you take this piece of paper and each space here, so this widest one, which is green, is if, if that squish mark were to line up with that, it'd be a thou. And then this white space here, if it was that width, it'd be one and a half thou. This green one here, which is narrower, two thou, and the narrowest, three thou. Okay? So in the manual, it says standard bearing clearance should be between 0 .0008 to 0 .0018. Okay? With uh, service clearance at 0 .0032. Okay? So let's see where we're at. We're definitely not at one thou because it would have to be wider. Uh, we're definitely not at one and a half thou. We're at about two thousandths bearing clearance. Okay, both on both sides. So it's a little looser than I'd want. I'd want maybe a thou and a half or a thou eight point zero zero one eight. Okay, so with the green bearings, we're roughly getting two thou oil clearance across the board average. What I did is I ordered all 10 shells in brown, which is the next size thicker, and it's going to reduce the clearance. So with in between these two, these should net us about half a thou less oil clearance. So if we're getting two thou with this, we should get a thou and a half with these guys. Okay, so I installed all 10 brown shells, you know, five in the lower, five in the upper, put the crank in, the plastic gauge, retorqued all the mains to 17 foot-pounds, and I'm getting really good readings here. And what I'll do is I'll pull this crank out, put it on the bench, and we can look at it. Okay, so here's the first journal. Definitely right smack in the middle of thou and a half, especially on this one here. So we were at two thou roughly, or maybe a hair under, and now we're definitely at a thou and a half. So that's good on journal number one. Okay, journal number two. Again, we're at a thou and a half here. Here's journal three with the brown bearings. Definitely wider than two. Okay, we're at a thou and a half right there. About a thou and a half there as well. Okay, journal number four. Brown bearings. About a thou and a half as well here. Almost a thou and a half, or a little over a thou and a half on that side. But that looks good. All right, last, number five. Thou and a half right there. Same there. So thou and a half across the board. Okay, a piece of advice. I bought all 10 shells and I had to go to thicker shells. Well, I didn't have to, but I wanted to. So only buy two shells, test them in each location, 
and then find out what you have to order because now I'm stuck with 10 bearing shells that I can't return. Hopefully I can recoup some money uh, by selling it on a forum or whatever or on eBay, but basically uh, that, that is an expensive lesson. Now for the CB550, I got lucky. I went through the charts and everything and the, the clearance was dead nuts on. With this guy here, it was just a little larger than I would like, so um, that why, that's why I went with uh, the thicker brown bearings. Okay, so what happens if you have uh, too loose of oil clearance? Well, basically, your oil pressure is going to drop, and maybe when it's hot and at idle, okay? And then there's less oil actually going to the top end because of less oil pressure. So that's really not desirable. So I just want to make sure that that this thing is going to have good oil pressure and we won't have any issues when it's hot and idling in traffic. Okay, next up, it's the same thing for the rods, except the rods will have a numerical character for the rod hole size. And again, with the crank, it's either marked on the crank or you can measure it and then you just install it, put the plastic gauge and it pretty much works the same as the mains. One point four one seven. One point four one seven. So all these are the same size. One point four one seven. Okay, so now with that information we head over to the um, service manual. Let, let me pull that out. Okay, so over here I just jotted down what I got for the rods. So 1.4172, okay, for all four of them roughly. Okay, this, this gets a little confusing because as you can see, here in this table they got connecting rod, one, two, three. Okay, this is the alpha mark on, you know, on here. So remember, this is a part of the rod. Remember there was a one uh, on mine, so the numerical value on the connecting rod that's stamped is, on mine are a one, okay? And that dimension isn't gonna change, okay? Because it's, 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 it's machined, it's measured, and then it's stamped. I mean, I can go through measuring it, but I found that it's pretty, pretty accurate. Now over here, here, this is the confusing part, the crank pin. This is what we measured, and here you see I have it crossed out. They had one, two, three here in this table up here but down here they had three, four, five. So I think this is a typo. I think this should be a three, four, five up here, okay? And then if we go with that, I am a one. And if you come over here, three, four, five, I'm in the three range. So it looks like I gotta get the yellow bearings. So that's what I ordered. This part was really confusing for me because of this typo. And honestly, it floats between the yellow and the green to be honest. Um, but it looks like the green bearings uh, will provide a little more bear, uh, oil clearance. So I went with the yellow, hopefully that'll work. I'll probably just try one set, and if I don't get the proper oil clearance, then I'll return the rest of them and get the green. But uh, I'll, I will try the yellow first. All right, we're gonna check the rod bearing clearances. We're just gonna do one, and that'll demonstrate how to do it for all four. So let me just go ahead and open these rod bearings here. Okay, so for these, I went with the yellow bearings. Again, there's a tang. So you just wanna get it lined up with the tang and just push down. Again, everything's clean here. I, I solvent washed um, the rods. This one here may look like a different color, I blasted it. There was a little bit of surface rust here, so I blasted it off and now it looks really clean. Okay, so I got a piece of plastic gauge here and I hope it'll stick. So we'll just leave it right there, hopefully it won't fall out. All right, and then torque it to 14 and a half foot-pounds. 
And do not move. Don't spin the crank. Try not to move the rod. All right, now we'll remove it. Okay, so you can see the plastic gauge is spread really wide, which means there's a thinner or smaller oil clearance. Now, I did put a little bit of grease to stick the plastic gauge in this position because otherwise it just kept falling off. So you see a little bit of grease residue all the way around. And I use a very small amount and you can see how it just pushed it all away. But anyway, it looks like I got a thou and a half clearance right on the money thou and a half on this rod bearing so that's good okay here's rod two and three and the plastic gauge stuck to the bearing here um, for rod two we are in between thou and a half and two thou so like a thou eight maybe and then for rod three we're at like in between thou and a half and two thou Okay, for rod four, we are definitely at a thou and a half. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.